Hello. There's two major things that have had a massive influence on my role-playing hobby, uh, as in what inspires me to run the sort of games that I do, and that's Alien, of course, as you can see from those Dark Places and Pressure, and uh, Tolkien's Middle Earth, uh, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, etc., etc. Mainly the Lord of the Rings, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, so I've riffed and I've taken elements of, and I've been inspired by the aesthetics of, especially the Peter Jackson movies. Uh, because Peter Jackson movies kind of gave me my, my visual cue that I was looking for. So when I was running Middle Earth games 20 years ago, we were all on the same page. And um, But yeah, Alien is what I want to talk about today. Because Alien, of course, is my favourite film of all time. And it basically influenced me in the fact that I was in love with the idea of a small group of people being stuck out in the middle of nowhere uh, and having to deal with the problem. Uh, I've been winning some games. I've been playing in some games called oh, Traveller and some D6 uh, Star Wars games as well. And we've been winning the games for so long that the um, that the player characters, that the players, had made quite a contact, a network of contacts, and which is great, fantastic. Because you want that kind of a, a fleshed out sandbox world which feels lived in. Uh, the issue being is that whenever I came up. Uh, you know, I introduced a new problem. They, the chances are they might have known somebody who could help them or had the tools to help them and make the job a lot easier. So they just fly to another planet and say, hey, come and help you. And of course, there's only so many times that you can say, oh, he's not in today, or he's off doing something else uh, before it becomes a little bit contrived. Um, and now I love that kind of sandbox feeling, especially if you've got some decent NPCs, because then your characters can go looking for them and your player characters can go looking for them and, you know, the conversations, a little bit of interaction. And everybody loves a bit of interaction, um, and then you can go off and have an adventure, and, and it gives the, the it gives the setting a more lived-in sort of feel to it. You know, it, it feels alive, it feels organic. Um, whereas with Alien, what I wanted was, yeah, you are a bunch of people stuck in the middle of nowhere. So when I wrote those dark places, that's why I reduced it to a, a bunch of crew positions. Um, so you were stuck in the middle of nowhere, and you did have a specific job to do, and you could only do so much, and it you know created a lot of tension in the games. Uh, but I think the first time Alien really, really influenced me... A quick bit of background. I first saw Alien in 1982. I think it was July. Um, and it was the World Cup. And uh, it was on, on the evening of the World Cup final at 9.30 on ITV. And I remember seeing a trailer, which I actually found online. Actually, It's actually on YouTube. I'll try and stick it in the description below. Uh, the original trailer, which got me interested. Um, it knows you're afraid. You know what I mean? It's... Um, but it's a brilliant trailer and it really caught my attention so I snuck a black and white television uh, a little plastic portable TV up into my bedroom because uh, I was only 11 years old at the time and I watched it hiding you know, with quite volume down underneath uh, my duvet whilst everybody else the rest of my older family watched it downstairs and uh, yeah I was 11 years old and I was watching Alien uh, in the dark in black and white so hmm, hmm. Uh, <laughs> so it had quite, had quite an effect on me um, I didn't watch it again for a long time. Terrified for the crap out of me, let's face it. Uh, I didn't fully understand it. Um, you know what I mean? I didn't understand the cosmic horror level of it, that kind of Lovecraftian, you know. I was more afraid of the dark and the creature than I was afraid of the ideas behind it, or the fact, you know, this this weird sort of almost mythical being from, from the far past living uh, on a ship that had fossilised. And those ideas didn't really strike me until later on. Um, and actually, you know, one of the reasons why I love Aliens so much because there's so many layers to it. And then I didn't see it again until about a week before Aliens came out. I saw Aliens on its opening night. I was 15 years old. Uh, we went to premiere night uh, at a cinema in Warsaw. And my mate Mark's dad took us uh, took, took us both. And it was brilliant. It was amazing. For a 15-year-old kid to see Aliens, with all the, the darkness and the action and the testosterone and the one-liners. Oh, sorry, it's not the desk. So I was getting overexcited then. Uh, and all the one-liners and all that sort of stuff, and that burned into my brain. Um, Aliens is a fantastic, fantastic film, and it coloured that and Alien coloured the way that I ran science fiction films for quite a long time. And it got to such a point where I was running games in established settings and trying to add an element of Alien or Aliens to it. I mean, back in the late eighties, the chances are we'd see a film and then we'd go back and then try and role-play it out, try and. Uh, try and emulate the film and the games that we were playing. And we did it. I remember doing that with Roadhouse, uh, the original Patrick Swayze film when it came out. I remember doing it with Rambo 3, believe it or not. I remember doing it with Ghostbusters. Um, I remember going home and. Uh, Ghostbusters 2, sorry. I remember going home and trying to emulate what I'd just seen on the film, but in the settings and the setting uh, that I was running. And I used to do it all the time with Alien. And 
it, it worked for the most part, but when you're trying to shoehorn in an alien type game in the Star Wars setting, yeah, there's a, there's a few problems. Uh, I ended up talking with this creature called the uh, the Coriathanax, and it was uh, this genetically engineered creature, supposed to be the perfect warrior, etc., etc. And uh, I mean, they were fun. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we were sort of late teens, early twenties, um, so we were having a lot of fun with it. And uh, but then I kind of realised that there was more. To, and then and then it be, and then it became old. Do you know what I mean? It became a little bit dull. I was doing it all the time. I was thinking, oh, let's do this, and then there's these characters. It looks like a smart gun and. And you can see it in your players' faces. Oh God, here we go again. You know what I mean? So, uh, and I think the last time I did it, and I thank you, Paul Gilbert. I remember him uh, telling me he was getting the map of the Titanic, the layout of the Titanic. He got it from the Birmingham Library. And so I ran a game. Uh, it was going to be a two-parter, and it was set on the Titanic. And um, there was a murder. Somebody had been killed in mysterious circumstances, but they were trying to keep it quiet so not to panic the the people. And there was an alien-type creature on board the Titanic. And then, just as they found it, it was all they were. Oh, we're going to kill it! And then, of course, the iceberg happens, and then you've got a two-hour countdown then to to sort of get the creature and, and kill it before it escapes the ship. Um, I ran the first part of that, and up until the point where it hits the iceberg, and then never actually followed up. And I've always regretted that. I've always regretted not not continuing, not finishing that, because I think at that point I kind of knew what I wanted to do with those kind of games, and it, so it. it it, it, it wasn't the alien that I wanted to emulate. Well, originally I was emulating Alien and Aliens and, and the creatures and the background and the way people acted and the Marines and all that kind of stuff. And then I realised it shouldn't be the Alien and Aliens that I should be emulating. It should be the, the atmosphere that I should be emulating, the idea of that. It, um, it can't always be Aliens. It can be, I, I don't know, a nut with a stick. It could be a disgruntled employee, it could be somebody who's uh, unbalanced, um, it could be just a dog or a monkey that's gone nuts, you know what I mean? And it's just, it, it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be the creature all the time. So then I got into uh, writing um, adventures which are probably more, more, probably more towards the horror aspect of things. And then I started to focus a bit more on, okay, you're a group of people, you're trapped here, what are you going to do? Uh, doesn't necessarily is a monster, or it's a mystery. But one of my favourite ones was an AI had gone wrong and was basically controlling your ship and trying to kill people with the ship. Been done before, but yeah, it was great fun. It was great fun. So, so yeah, for a long time, um, Alien and Aliens coloured, and, and sometimes discoloured, uh, my role playing um, a lot. And I was... I was always trying to, like I say, I was always trying to shoehorn it into the games that I was playing, and sometimes it worked, and sometimes it was an absolute disaster. So when I wrote uh, the original Those Dark Places, all oh gold, what, 15 years ago now? It was a completely different system. Uh, I put it out for playtest, and again, I'd focused on science fiction horror, and I made the mistake of trying to not emulate or, or capture the atmosphere of Alien and Aliens. I was basically trying to copy it. So when I came to work those dark places, I purposely kept the alien side out of it, even though I kind of mentioned that you can sort of use that if you want to, and focused a little bit more on um, just stuff going wrong in the middle of nowhere, the stress, the stress of, of living in deep space on your own. And the, even the adventures that I wrote, uh, there's no aliens in it. There's there's a couple of, of weird ones. Um, I think it's Gamma Sigma Twelve. Uh, that's that's a bit of a strange. That's, that's that's probably a bit more towards the sort of aliens side of things. So, um, so yeah, I kind of finally managed to strike a balance between emulation and uh, basically just ripping it off every five minutes because it was cool to do so. And uh, yeah, so yeah, my love of Alien goes deep. I mean, out the way, out the way, Dallas. Um, this is the this is the my pride. These are dust actually. This is my make sure we get that. This is my pride and joy on my shelf. The Nostromo, Bison class. Absolutely love this model. I'll tell you what. I'll take that off. Tell you what I want to do though, I want to try and get some landing legs on there and try and get the other veins as well uh, that stick out from the sides because uh, I think that would look absolutely fantastic. She's a gorgeous model. Uh, this is when Eagle Moss, I, th I think you can still get it. Uh, um, it's when Eagle Moss were doing their models. Oh, sorry, blocking the camera. I'm, sorry, I'm really trying hard not to drop that. And then I went another hog and picked up the Narcissus as well. This one's a very good model actually. There were some details on this which I never noticed from the film. I mean, it's, it's not it's not perfect, but there's some lovely some lovely details on this, and and the actual shape of it, to be honest with you, I've never never really appreciated what a nice simple what nice simple lines it has. Absolutely gorgeous, and then of course, 
we got the chap, the chap himself, with his uh, jawbone ankles. It's one of my favourite models, actually. I think we really, really do like that. So, uh, so yeah, and then of course, what you can see at the top there, I mean, that, that go, there's loads more stuff at the back of there, and I've got loads more stuff stored away because I simply don't have the, the space for it. And I think I've got every single special edition release of the videos and the and the DVDs down there. And that is the album. Um, that's an original press, and I found that completely by chance because mine broke a long time ago. And I found that completely by chance. And the reason why I like it so much is because the cover's slightly torn. It looks like a Star Destroyer. Brilliant. Two for the price of one there. So, uh, so yeah, really, really chuffed with that. I'll put that back later. And then, of course, my role-playing alien, Pete, here, when um, um, Free League, uh, Free League Anne released the... Uh, I was going to get it out, but I'm afraid that loads of other books are going to fall over. But you know what it looks like. Uh, when Free League Anne released the alien role-playing game, uh, which was absolutely fantastic, because I already like the system anyway, the system that they were using. And... To actually have a book which kind of defines the law, and and they've actually the law that they've used from Prometheus through to Alien Three, um, and a little bit beyond, is excellent. And of course, we've got Alien Romulus coming out soon, uh, which is I think is between Alien and Aliens. Have I got that right? Uh, then again, again, I'm trying to avoid rumours. I'm, I'm sure that uh, that will Fede Alvarez will actually fill those gaps in. But yeah, um, so I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be great. So yeah, it's a good time to be an Alien fan, and uh, so I think that's the end of the video. So thanks very much for listening. Um, I probably waffled a little bit there, to be honest with you. I'm kind of just showing off my collection a little bit. So Too Long Didn't Listen, Alien's my favourite film of all time. Uh, Aliens is a fantastic sequel, although I do prefer Alien Isolation as a sequel, thematically and design-wise. And uh, I let it colour my role-playing hobby for many, many years, sometimes uh, negatively. And that's that. Um, brilliant. Thanks very much. Ciao.